Okay guys, I've come across my first little problem on the uh, little wood heater. Uh, it's the gasket on the front. Uh, here's a the last video that I did with the gasket. is on there, it's glued on there. It's working, it's hard. And then I let it sit out. It's, it sits out just outside the shop here, temporarily. But it sits outside the shop here. And we had a little light rain the other day. And that's the only thing I can figure is that little light rain softened that glue up. And uh, let, let me show it to you. See here, it's come completely off. This is outside the shop, and the only thing I can figure is water got on there and softened the glue. This was real hard the other day. It was on there and it was solid, just like you've seen on the video I just showed you. And it is all soft now, like no glue's ever been in it. It's never been on the door. See, that's still kind of flat right there. But see, I can just I can push it back. And uh, nothing sticky up here. A little residue there. I don't understand it. But I do have a plan. I do have a plan. And I'm going to go glueless. If, if strippers can go topless, maybe even bottomless, I can go glueless. And uh, let me show you my plan. Okay. This is an old oven. And I was wondering, how do the ovens do it? Do they have a pinch bar or something that holds the gasket? And uh, from what I found, this is old gas oven. I'm trying to do this with two hands. This is not going to be easy. See, there's no glue back there. No attachment points. It's just stretched from one corner down to the other. It's just stretched. No holes up there. It's just stretched. It's not glued. But there's a hole right here. It's got a little metal piece in there. And uh, it's just attached right there and stretched across. So I'm playing, and I've looked at two ovens, two separate makes of ovens, and they're both very similar with the same kind of gasket set up. Okay, here's my plan. I've cut, I found this wire. This is steel wire. It's coated with something, probably galvanized or something. I don't know. But it is steel wire because I checked it with a magnet. I'm going to run this wire through the middle of this gasket. This is an extra gasket. This is the one that was on the door. This is the one I'm going to use. But I'm going to rerun this wire through this gasket and make it stiff where I can go around this door here. And then once I do that, I'm gonna take this, uh, this washer, lock washer, yeah, that's what they call it, lock washer. It ain't much of a lock, but. And I'm gonna cut it in two, like that. And then I'm gonna weld at the top and the bottom, a little place there. Anyhow, let me let me get a little further along in here and I'll show you what I did. Alright, I need to catch up before I go too far, too fast. I've got the wire ran in there. And I used some chalk to go around where the gasket was at originally. That I had it on here glued, as you can see under there. And then once I did that, I ran the wire in there, which is very tedious, but it's doable and it makes it real stiff. And I kind of shaped it. I may have to do some more shaping. And uh, but my plans now is, like I said, take that uh, lock washer, take a small pair of cutters. And uh, find center. Keep 
keep your fingers on it off to one side but where it won't just jump out there they are now my plan is and I may have to do this off camera too is I'm going to weld these two at the top and two at the bottom I may have to put, make some more for the sides I don't know but I'm going to weld them right right here I don't know if that's showing on camera, but right right there. Enough to where it's a little gap where I can run some more wire, some more of this wire here. And I don't know what size wire this is. But I'll find a picture of some wire and I'll show it up there. But uh, then I can take a small piece of this wire, cut it with some cutters. And run it through this that's going to be tack welded on there. Run it through here and around the fiberglass cord. And tighten it up real tight and then clip it off. So let me let me get these on there. I'm gonna, also, I'm going to grind it. I'm going to grind a little spot there where it'll weld real easy. Okay, I got my uh, welds all cleaned up with the grinder. But also... I, I welded these in a slant right there. See where I welded them in a slant? Kind of leaned them. And then I grind the top of the part, top of the washer off just a little bit too to give it a little more clearance when the door closes. And uh, I've got them all wired in except these last two. And uh, just figured, uh, what the heck, do it on camera, right? And you got to kind of shape it as you go. That makes common sense. And I did put some on all four corners. I just cut a little piece of wire about that length. Now just put it in front of the washer, next to the washer, then put it on top of the washer. We need clearance. You know, just kind of Hammer it down and lay it to one side. It took a while to snake that through there, but as you can see, it will go. I don't have to be concerned about the glue or anymore. That's the only thing I can figure it got wet. It got wet and it let loose. Finishing it off down here, I guess I'll do the same thing, just kind of twist it together. This is the first one I've ever done like this. But I tell you what, if I gotta do another one, this is how I'm gonna do it. Because they're not glued on the stoves as you've seen from the picture, the video. Okay, I have got it hung back on there. I had to readjust the bolts here. I'm glad I did this adjustment idea because the gasket is, is, is bigger, it's different than it was earlier. So I had to readjust it anyhow, readjust it. And, uh, but I've got it on there and uh, pretty much there it is. It ain't going anywhere. Close is good. I've got to make an adjustment down here. Well, this will pull in easier. 
but it will pull up once I get it pulled in there but if like I said I need to make an adjustment here and there's no gap in there no leakage looks good I'm happy with it maybe I can say this project is finished now I don't know be ready to use this winter we're just at the beginning of July here in Louisiana so it's nowhere near time for a wood heater. But it is it is ready for when uh, the weather does change. But yeah, the gap looks real good down through there. But I just got to make an adjustment right here where it closes easier. And uh, I did use some vice grips of some kind. I didn't do this. I don't know where you buy these at. But I went around and crimped the door all the way around, kind of squish it in place a little bit. I went all the way around and crimped it real good. And uh, kind of squish that gasket down just a little bit. And then I was able to close this. And it's got a, it, it's airtight. Well, I don't know if it's airtight, but there ain't no leakage spots on it and uh, I don't have to worry about that glue anymore yeah I just need to fix this where I can tighten it do something there hey guys there it is I finally got it done but uh, yeah I think I'm gonna be real happy with it this winter and uh, yeah I finally got this done I keep saying it, I, I can't hardly believe I finally got it done. It seemed like it took months, but it really didn't. But, uh, yeah, go watch the other videos. It's like six or seven of them. They're pretty lengthy, but it still goes from start to finish and uh, walks you through the whole detail of taking nothing, taking something out of your backyard, if you've got a backyard like mine. It's got a lot of scrap iron and stuff in it that I collected and use for doing projects but uh, yeah and then there's probably a, somewhere you can find all this scrap and uh, build you one save you like eight hundred dollars five to eight hundred dollars you know and get the ashtray on the bottom and everything because you'll build it talk to you later bye you in the video are giving us a like or subscribing Makes us want to bring on a little more entertainment. Don't you agree?